Hello and welcome along to the Flexi Classes YouTube channel. Today we're going to focus on a very, very popular language learning app called Duolingo. And we're going to focus specifically on their Japanese course. So thanks very much for tuning into our channel. My name is Max and I work in the marketing team here at LTL Flexi Classes, where we're constantly looking for new and excellent ways to learn languages and impart that wisdom onto you guys. Now, if you are a language learner, then you've probably heard of Duolingo and, and will be thinking it's not particularly new or unheard of, and you would be absolutely right. However, we still want to bring you a review about it because if you are new to Japanese or languages in general, it's definitely worth checking the app out. So, without further ado, let's go straight in. Right, so in this video, I'm going to have a screen with some of the Duolingo screenshots pop up alongside me, but I'll also talk you through it as well. So we're gonna start off by giving you a little bit more of a background into Duolingo because they teach a lot of languages. So if you can think of a language, they probably teach it. They teach a bit of everything, all the way down to the likes of Hawaiian and other endangered languages that you probably wouldn't even thought of learning before. So Japanese, is one of the more popular ones on their curriculum. Now they have a total of 133 courses. If you go all the way through, you'll see lots of different names such as basics, numbers, sports, particles. There's lots of different things you can learn with the Japanese Duolingo course. And in total, there are 133, so it's relatively extensive. And they're broken down into mini lessons. So each subject, let's say numbers, will have six lessons and I would say each lesson lasts about five to 15 minutes but we'll come on to that more shortly. What I do like about Duolingo for Japanese is their alphabet course and we're going to touch on that soon as well but if you're new to Duolingo and you've not seen it before essentially it's a really useful language learning app for beginners of a language and that is who I want to focus on today so if you are an advanced or even an intermediate Japanese student Duolingo probably isn't the app for you, so it's probably time to switch off right now. Although, subscribe to our channel before you go. So we're gonna quickly take a dive into a Duolingo lesson. Now they do vary from language to language, but at the same time, they also have a relatively similar template. But of course it depends on the language because with some, like Japanese, you're gonna to have to learn a new alphabet or plural actually in the case of Japanese alphabets before you come onto anything else whereas with a French or a Spanish or an Italian you probably already know the alphabet and you can dive straight into the vocabulary so that's the first thing to know. So a lesson typically on Duolingo I would say lasts between 5 and 15 minutes. In some cases they'll be quicker and in some cases they might even be longer depending on how deep you're digging into it and how difficult you're finding it also. And the lessons on Duolingo are supposedly quite quick fire and with each one you're learning a new set of buzzwords typically. So if I go into sports, let's say, then you're probably going to learn football, rugby, snooker, tennis, Aussie rules, American football, maybe those six in one lesson. And then in the next lesson you'll recap some of those and then also learn some new sports. So maybe sports to do with the Olympics or maybe water sports or winter sports or something like that. And then you, ideally what you're doing is you're going over the same ones again and again and you're repeating it and you're remembering it. With the lessons, you can take them as many times as you want. So you don't just have to take it once, pass it and think that you've finished and it will stay in there because it probably won't. Typically with languages, you need to revise again and again and again. And with Duolingo, you can pick up crowns and stars as you go along, which show the strength of how well you're doing. So I think the maximum crowns you can pick up for any topic would be five. And that essentially means you've taken that course five times fully completed. And in essence, they make your course gold. And that means that it's rock solid in your mind and it should be quite good. Whereas if you've done it once, you've completed it, well done, and you can move on to the next one, but it still might not be stuck in there, so you might need to go back to it. So it is worth retaking a lot of the classes again, I find, just to recap and remember. 
So along with the buzzwords that you'll learn, you'll also learn sentence structures as well. So obviously, when you speak a language, you need to be able to formulate sentences. So for example, with sports, it might teach you things like, I play football, I like to play rugby, I don't like to swim. So it will start getting you using the other things. And this is what it does with Japanese, but also actually with all the other courses. I've studied a few other languages on there to varying degrees. and. They follow a similar pattern in terms of introducing you to the vocab and then moving you forward to sentences, as most of the apps would do. So one thing I did want to touch on that I've really enjoyed with Duolingo is their alphabet course. And I like this because of two things actually. So firstly, the Japanese alphabet course is essentially teaching you the hiragana and the katakana and these are two of the three Japanese alphabets. The third one being kanji but unfortunately there is no kanji course and we'll also come on to that soon. So with the hiragana and katakana lessons they typically teach you four characters or letters or whatever you want to call them in each lesson and then you revise, revise, revise and revise until you get your letters to the gold bars and when you've got them to that stage it means that you've studied them to a long enough time that you should be able to remember them and I went through this from the start with hiragana and then katakana all the way to the golden bars and I can safely say now that I feel very very comfortable reading any hiragana and katakana in Japanese of which I didn't really before I would always mix up or forget a number of the characters but now I feel at a stage where I can differentiate them all. Of course that's been through personal study, that's been with lessons that I've been taking but a lot of that I, I put down to the Duolingo alphabet course which is great. A good thing also about it is you're not penalised for getting it wrong. So one of my negatives about Duolingo which I'm going to come to soon is that in normal lessons you only get five lives and when you've had those five lives your time's up and you have to essentially stop learning or you have to regain more and it's quite frustrating unless you're a paid member and then you get unlimited lives and no problems. So that leads us nicely into the pros and cons of Duolingo. So we're going to give four pros and four cons. So let's go straight into those right now. So the first pro I like about Duolingo is the simple and easy to use interface. Now, there's not much I really need to say more about this. I think it's easy to use, it's very simple. Some apps try and reinvent the wheel, some go a bit too far with it, but I like the simplicity and the easy layout. Everything is top to bottom, so it's really easy to use. Interface number one. Pro number two is I think it's a really good app for language learning beginners, especially if you're just coming into a language and with one like Japanese, with the aforementioned alphabet course as well. I'm a beginner in Japanese and I found it a really good aid at the moment. Of course, you can't just use Duolingo and nothing else. You need to complement it with other things, but I think it's really useful for beginners to get the feet off the ground and especially picking up the alphabet. Pro number three is just that. It's the alphabet course, which we've just talked about. Excellent for beginners, hiragana and katakana, very well put together. A fourth thing I like about Duolingo is their motivational notifications. Now, notifications on your phone is a very personal thing. A lot of people don't like them, and typically I don't really like getting too many push notifications on my phone. But with something like language learning, I quite like it because it helps remind me what I need to be doing. And I've always found in all my time of using Duolingo that they're really quite good with just nudging you just the right amount of time. So they don't do it too much, but they do it just about enough to make sure that you get your daily study in. And I cannot state enough how important it is to build up everyday study. Even if it's just five, 10 minutes, it really does make a lot of difference. Okay, so onto the cons for Duolingo now. And typically this is probably with most of the languages, but I find that if you're an intermediate or advanced speaker of any language, then Duolingo is no use to you whatsoever. If you have a relatively good Japanese level, I'd probably say even M4 or above, then you really wouldn't want to be using Duolingo to study, which is a shame because there's definitely potential with so many languages to hit them, but obviously they've gone for the, more the beginners and early intermediate speakers. 
Con number two is another thing we mentioned before, and that's the five heart lives. I do really dislike this. I see why they've done it. They're obviously trying to encourage people to pay for the app, and I fully understand that because they have a business to run. But I don't think language learners should be punished, and I think there's other ways they can go about getting subscriptions rather than losing your five lives and then generally having to wait till the next day to get them back. So for me, the punishment of, of making mistakes is not good because all language learners make mistakes. Number three, and this is particularly with languages very different to English, is that you can find a lot of things get lost in translation. There's a number of words in Japanese, also Chinese, Vietnamese and Korean and, and many others that just don't translate between languages like we think they would do. And this can mean that some things get lost in translation or the English does become quite awkward. And this is something I found with Duolingo, having studied Chinese, Japanese and Korean on the app. And it can be very confusing if you're a beginner to a language, but also if you're a non-native speaker studying in English, it was probably even more confusing. So I think some work could be done on some of the choices of, of words, sentences and translations on the Duolingo app. The fourth con, and I think this is quite a big one actually, is there's no real tutorial at all for kanji. Now kanji is the third Japanese alphabet, not something we're going to go into now, but essentially it's thousands and thousands of characters that have been imported from Mandarin. So with hiragana and katakana, you've got two alphabets that you can learn just like that. Within a week, a couple of weeks, you can read hiragana and katakana with not too many issues. But with kanji, you have to just remember them. There's no other way. It's like studying Mandarin Chinese, which I've done before, so I'm fully aware of the, the strains and struggles that learners go through. And there's no real introduction to this. They filter kanji into the lessons, which is all good and well, but if you don't really know about kanji, then you've got no idea what's going on. So I think they should probably add a couple of courses to the 133 they've already got, explaining what kanji are, introducing us perhaps to the 50 or 100 most used or basic kanji that come up in everyday speak, and then go from there, because at the moment that's lacking and that's a big shame. Right, so that's a, a beginner's look at the Duolingo app. So we could go into more detail, but I think that that probably covers it quite well. What I'd recommend you do yourself if you're a beginner to Japanese or any other language is download Duolingo and just play with it. I would say it's a really, really good and useful app for beginners. However, if you already have a foothold in Japanese, then you probably already know anyway that Duolingo isn't really going to be the app for you. However, Perhaps you want to try your hand at Mandarin or Korean or something relatively similar. Maybe give it a go. One thing I would recommend again, and I've already mentioned it, make it a daily habit. This is a really good thing to do and Duolingo are quite good with making sure you keep up on your daily streak as they call it. So they make sure they publicise it all over your page and when you hit your daily streak by completing a lesson, they give you a big flame and they show you the number and it's ticking up. And it's good to do that, even as I said, if it's just five or 10 minutes. Ideally, you spend a little bit more some days, but I think it's such an important thing to do with any language that you absorb something every single day. If you do happen to be into Japanese or Korean or Mandarin or Vietnamese or other languages from Asia and further afield, then check out our website. It's flexiclasses.com and we provide 24 seven around the clock live language lessons in small groups. It's something that's never been done on the internet before. And trust me, we know that because we searched far and wide for them. We spent a long, long time creating these courses and we're really, really proud to bring them to you. If you also want to find out more about Duolingo, we also wrote a review on our website. You can see it on my big screen right there. It's on flexiclasses.com forward slash Japanese. That's where all our Japanese blog content is. So do go and check it out if you want to have more of a breakdown on what I've spoken about and other useful things, including the download link to the app itself as well. We're going to be bringing you more content on not just Japanese, but also Korean, Mandarin and other language learning tools, hacks, tips, tricks, the lot. 
So thank you very, very much for watching. Please subscribe because I'm sure if you got this far, you quite like the video. Give us a like and a comment and let us know what you think of Duolingo. Have a good day. Bye-bye.